is a proverb by Ignacio Estrada that states, If a child can't learn the way we teach, maybe we should teach the way they learn. In this video, I will share with you an example of a learning program that meets the unique learning needs of the child and adolescent with severe to profound intellectual disabilities. Principles outlined in this learning program can help you to put together activities for the child who is in a particular learning stage. In South Africa, the Department of Basic Education understands that children with intellectual disabilities require a lot of support to be included in the education system. In order to make sure that they are not only present and merely observing what happens around them, the Department of Basic Education set guidelines to ensure that children can participate in a way that is meaningful to them. This program is a learning strategy for differentiation. In other words, it tells us how to plan and change various activities to meet the specific learning needs of the child. You can find the link to this document in the resources called the Learning Framework for Children with Severe to Profound Intellectual Disability. In the learning program, the subject areas relate to the national curriculum, namely the Curriculum Assessment Policy Statement for Foundation Phase, better known as CAPS. CAPS is adapted for learners with severe to profound intellectual disability to cover three key subjects – communication and language, visual, perceptual and cognitive skills, and life skills. The guiding principle is that these subjects are not presented separately in a given time slot. For example, there is not a period for life skills and another period where only communication and language is addressed. Rather, Content from these subjects are combined into one activity. Integration of these subjects are very important and should be present in all the different activities of the day. To make learning possible for children with intellectual disabilities, children need to be grouped according to their abilities and learning needs. It is therefore important to consider in which stage of the learning process the child is in. A particular child can be in the awareness, the engagement or in the active learning stage. Let's talk about the learning program in terms of activity ideas and how to change activities so that it is suitable for the particular learning stage that a child is at. As we discussed in a previous lecture, children in the awareness stage need full support to stay aware of what is happening around them. They are in the process of learning to give attention. The learning program calls children from this learning stage an awareness group. In this group, activities are structured so that children learn to communicate through social interaction, which starts with a caregiver. All activities should therefore be based on stimulating the different senses, which are the earliest building blocks of visual, perceptual and cognitive skills. The aim of these activities should be to develop early life skills. For instance, their social-emotional well-being is improved when they are able to recognize people closest to them. We previously described the second learning stage, the engagement stage, when children are not only aware of another person, but are more responsive during social interaction with a caregiver. Children who are in this stage of the learning process are able to give attention and they enjoy to explore things around them, still with the help of a caregiver, of course. Children in this stage are referred to as the transitional group. For this group, we need to combine content from the three subjects into activities that fill up the day, in the same way, every day. When we give structure and routine to their every day, they can form a memory and follow a chain of events. This sense of routine is necessary in order for them to develop basic self-care skills. When using objects in the learning program, we need to use real objects for children in the transitional group. In this way, they can learn the different features of different things and try out what we usually do with these objects. The aim for this group is for the child to recognize and differentiate between different objects and their uses, so that in the end they can brush their teeth or use a spoon to feed with a greater sense of independence. Children in the third stage, the active learning stage, are called the interactive group. Children in this stage interact with others and communicate in their own way. Through actively doing things by themselves, they learn to think and to reason, but they will mostly still need a reminder of what to do and how to do it. 
they start to learn about shapes, colors and space and how things are different and when are things the same. For example, they can learn to sort socks according to the different colors. Activities designed for this group should combine content from the different subjects, but with the aim of developing an optimal level of independence in their skills of daily living. As you can see, the important thing is how you present the activities to the different groups. Let us see how the integration of the three subject areas takes place. Let's look at an example. Rolling a ball in a specific direction is a motor skill and part of life skills. However, throughout the game of rolling a ball, you should describe and name people, say what the ball is like and what they are doing with it. If you do this, this activity also addresses communication and language skills. At the same time, this activity helps to direct a child's attention to themselves, to other people and to the things around them, in this instance a ball. They are able to develop body awareness, a sense of their position in space and many other of the early perceptual skills. Eventually, basic concepts like colors, for instance, can be included. In other words, it also addresses the third subject area, namely visual, perceptual and cognitive skills. Now that you understand this concept of integration of subject areas, the learning program suggests that you do so by means of topics. Topics must, however, be relevant to the child and it is very important that it forms part of their immediate surroundings. This means that topics should be centered around family and friends and include things they come into contact with on a daily basis. So how can we use topics to address all three subject areas? Let us take a look at the topic on clothes, for instance. Clothes can serve as a topic for discussion or form part of a story, which allows for language skills to be developed. When you train a child to take off his socks, you are trained an amount of independence in personal care, a life skill. During activities at the table, children can match photo cards of different garments and show on a picture card where on the body the sock goes. This would address visual, perceptual and cognitive skills. We can then use one topic throughout the day and throughout the week. In this way, you can ensure that lots of repetition takes place and that skills and knowledge is generalized in different situations. When implementing the learning program, it is also suggested that classrooms be divided according to age categories. In this way, learning experiences can relate to everyday activities and be meaningful. This helps to plan different activities for the very young child, which should be very different to activities intended for teenagers. One example in the learning program helps us to change activities to accommodate children from different age groups. It relates to the skill of using your hands. The activity suggested for the preschoolers involves posting objects or picture cards. For the 7 to 14 year old, it is suggested that paper be torn and used in a craft project. Stringing beads could be a more appropriate choice for the teenagers and young adults. Within each age category, the different activities and the amount of support required will still have to be adapted according to the different learning stages. I hope that sharing principles from the learning program developed by the Department of Basic Education in South Africa will help you to plan activities which will meet the specific educational needs of each child, irrespective of their age or learning stage.